Hi and welcome to this DCP web tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a custom whirlpool transition using Magic's Movie Edit Pro. Okay, so on my desktop, I've got this folder and inside this folder, I've got three images and three video clips. I downloaded this content from Pixabay. I'll put links to those in the YouTube description. Okay, let's go ahead and open up Magic's Movie Edit Pro. And the first thing I'll do is take the three video clips and drag and drop them onto the timeline here. Okay, let's go ahead and open up Magic's Movie Edit Pro and we will take the three video clips, let's select them and drag and drop them onto the timeline. And I wanna add a custom transition between each one of these. You can't find this transition inside of the templates here. We have to, we have to create our own custom uh, transition. It's quite interesting you learn how to do this and then you can make other variations yourself. So let's go ahead and click on this timeline and we'll click on the first video clip. Let's click on this first one. We'll go to effects here and we'll click on distortion here. And what we want to do is add a transition right towards the end, or we want to add an effect and then use that as the transition. Let's move right towards the end of the timeline. So you'll see a little cursor here. This little bar across here represents the total duration of this video clip only. So we want to drag it all the way to the end at the very, very end. And that will be on 35 seconds on the very, very last frame of this video clip. And then what we need to do is jog this um, whirlpool. So let's just move it forward slightly. Um, in fact, we'll move it all the way to 100, 100 value here, and we'll add a keyframe. It says set keyframe here, so let's set a keyframe there. And we want to move now back 20 frames. So to move back 20 frames, we'll use the left arrow key on our keyboard, and we'll just press it 20 times basically. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 20, so that'll be 20 frames. That have to be exactly 20, but we're going to do 20 frames. And we'll click on the... Um, keyframe here so we've got a keyframe on this position and one at the very end and we want to set this value back to 50 so it's not um it's basically the uh, the effect has been removed so as we scrub through now we'll see this effect right but it jumps this straight to this other video clip quite abruptly so what we want to do is reverse that logic so let's click on this second video clip and let's go to the beginning of the timeline and we will set this to minus 100 we'll set this actually to a zero value zero value yeah and we'll add a keyframe here and we want to go forward 20 keyframes going forward is quite easy we just keep an eye here and make sure it's set to 20. so here we can see 20 and we're going to add another keyframe here and we're going to set the value back to 50. so if we were to click back now and click the play button we'll see it transition across like this let's just reduce the audio here let's just play this and we can see it transitioning across. I'm just gonna get rid of all of the audio on these clips and we can see that effect now, right? But it still kind of jumps between the two. So really what we want to do is click on this video clip. We'll click on this little arrow here, the left, the right one, and that will take us to exactly this keyframe. Then we can take this video clip and drag and overlap it. So there'll be a transition between them, a crossfade. So now when we click play, we can see it transitioning like this, which I think is a nice little effect. Here we can see it a bit more clearly. So that's how I go about creating this whirlpool effect. I'm gonna do it one more time just to show you an example on this second uh, video clip. So what we'll do is click back on this video clip. This is the second one. We've already got a transition set here, right? You can see the transition here. And what we'll do is go to the very end of this uh, video clip on the very last frame. We will add another keyframe. So what we need to do is just add a keyframe here and then we're going to go back 20 frames. So let's use the left arrow key and we'll go back 20 frames, right? So we're back 20 frames and we're going to add another keyframe. Let's add a keyframe here and we will leave the whirlpool set at 50. Let's go all the way back to that last keyframe and we're going to set this one to 100 here. So now we can see that little transition happening at the end of this video clip towards the end of this one. And let's just drag this video clip so it snaps to the one previously. We'll move over to this video clip, click on it. And at the beginning, let's just um, set the transition to zero or the whirlpool to zero and add a keyframe. And then we're gonna go forward 20 keyframes, right? 20. So let's just set that, it's set to 18 at the moment. Let's go forward a few more to 20 keyframes. We'll add a, another keyframe here and we'll set the value to 50. So we'll remove that. 
now all we need to do is click back on this first video clip and make sure we move to the um, the, the first keyframe here at the end right this keyframe and we'll take this video clip and overlap them again so let's move back and click play and now we can see that transition happening I think this is quite a cool little transition to create it's very much customized so um, but using this effect then you can look at all of these other options in here and you can start to learn how to create your own custom keyframes and your own custom transitions so just as a quick example um, let's just try that with some images I just want to show you one example quickly so we'll minimize this and let's just take um, let's just take two of these images although I've downloaded three I think we'll only apply this in fact we'll apply it to all three why not so let's select all three of these and we'll go back to magics and we'll drag and drop them onto the timeline so they'll be much smaller so let's take these three video clips and drag them to the side and we'll take these three images and drag them up so now they're showing at the beginning here and let's try and apply that same effect to the images so let's click on this first image We'll, we'll, we'll do this a little bit quicker now so we'll drag towards the end of the timeline here right towards the end and we'll move the swell the whirlpool all the way to 100 and then we'll set a keyframe here and then we're going to go back 20 frames so let's just go back to what that be 609 so let's drag across to 609 that'll be 20 frames 609 is right here and we will add another keyframe and we'll set this value back to 50 all right so the transition has been removed let's click on the second video clip go to the beginning and we'll set we'll add a keyframe and we set the whirlpool to zero value and then we'll move forward 20 frames 20 frames to this position here let's do 20 frames and we'll set the whirlpool back to 50 so it's going to reverse that transition let's click on the first video clip click on this arrow twice to move to the very first frame of that transition the keyframe and then we'll just take this image and drag and overlap it and if we click play now we'll see that transition happening here right between the two of them let's just check that's been done correctly I'm not sure let's see so this one isn't transitioning let's click on it for whatever reason did we add it to the first one no so that for whatever reason that transition didn't apply and I think I know why so let's click back on that image let's just fix this um, we need to move the whirlpool right to zero value and then add a keyframe and then we're going to go forward 20 frames let's see if there's an issue here let's go to 20 frames 20 let's try and get to 20 okay 21 will be okay and we'll add a keyframe and then let's set that to 50. so that should work now we should see that transition there that's good so let's click back on that first image and we're going to get to this keyframe here so we'll click the arrow twice to get to that first keyframe so that we can accurately overlap them let's see that now let's see if that works so I think that's correct that looks correct to me let's just see um, let's click on this second clip yep that looks fine because so we can see this this shape here that's the swell being applied to the second frame here right you can see that at the end the, the mountains moving like this so that's correct now um, let's apply that towards the end of this one so let's drag all the way to the end and we'll go to the distortion here and we'll add a keyframe so what we need to do is go to 100 here and then add the keyframe set it to 100 add the keyframe we're going to go back 20 frames so we set it to 6 um, of 9 609 will be here and we will let's um, add a keyframe and set this value to 50 let's just make sure that last one is set to 100 it is so we can see the transition towards the end let's click on this image move the timeline to this image go to the beginning let's uh, set the whirlpool to zero value and add a keyframe and then we want to go forward 20 frames 20 frames will be right here let's go for 20 frames and then we'll set this whirlpool value let's add a keyframe first and then set the whirlpool to 50 so it removes it and we should see the transition here as well now we just need to overlap them the reason why I click on this video clip click here is that we can get to this keyframe easily by just clicking the left 
or the right arrow, just make sure the timeline is on that keyframe. Then when you drag back and snap over, yeah, uh, it will always snap to the exact correct position here on that keyframe. So now you'll see the transition here like this. I guess we might as well add a transition between this image and the video. Let's try and do that. In fact, one thing we could do, we've got black bars down the side here on these images. So let's click on the image. Let's show you how to fix that quickly. We'll click on the image and we'll go to the uh, size and position. So let's click on the image, go to size and position. And we want to scale this out to probably 120. Let's see. Let's scale that a bit more. Let's see, 120, let's see, we don't even have to go that far. Set it to 110, and that will make sure we fill the full width. Um, let's see, let's click on this one. Let's drag out. So I think 120 is actually correct, 120. We'll click on this image here, move the timeline cursor to it so you can see it in the screen, and then set this to 120. So we're filling out basically the full um video screen here right that's all i'm trying to do and let's move across the timeline click here and set that one to 120. so now all of these video clips will or these images will fill the whole video screen let's click on this last clip and add a transition between that and this this video let's try that let's go right to the end we will go back to our distortion and we'll set the value to 100 and add a keyframe right add a keyframe and then let's move back we want to move back to 609 right 609 609 is written here and we will add a, another keyframe and set that value to 50. so now we've got the transition happening towards the end um, of this image and now we have to just do one for the video clip so let's go to the beginning of this video clip. Let's set the whirlpool to zero value and we'll add that keyframe. I believe when you change this, it automatically adding the keyframe anyway. But um, just to be safe, I'm going to add one and we're going to set this value to on the timeline to 20 frames and we'll go and add a keyframe and set the value here to 50. Then we can click back on the image and we'll click the arrow twice to move to that keyframe here. And we'll drag. In fact, we should select all of these video clips and drag them to transition. That way, we don't have to do these ones again. So, in theory, we should have it all transitioned out with this whirlpool uh, effect. Really, the one I want to see is between the still image, right, and the video clip. That one's a bit custom. I think we lost our little transition here between these two. Let's click here. Let's click forward to get to that keyframe. We can select all of this content all of these these pieces and drag and snap it over so we've got the transition here as well okay so i know that was a lot to explain but this way using this um using this logic you can now go and create your own custom transitions in magic smooth edit pro um, and this is quite an interesting transition to create so you won't find this in the default transitions this is one you have to create yourself so you can use the same logic if you click on the image you can play around with these fish eyes and you can set keyframes now for the fish eye, right? And for the mosaic and for the lens and for the sand and for the echo and the motion. You can use that same logic, but just don't use the whirlpool. Use one of these other ones and now you can create lots of different custom transitions. Let's go ahead and save this. Let's minimize this and close this. So that's how I go about using the whirlpool custom transition effect and how to apply that using Magic Smooth Edit Pro to images and video content. I hope you find this tutorial useful and I look forward to seeing you in the next DCP web tutorial.